Uh, it's a good morning to you. Welcome to Asake Online. My name is Zenzel Ndevele, and uh, we bring you this special program. We'll be talking to Professor Atham Tambara. He'll be launching a, a book on AI. Uh, I think this is the second book on AI, but not his uh, second book. He has written quite a number. The book is called uh, uh, AI, a Driver of Inclusive Development and Shared uh, Prosperity Global South. Uh, so we will be talking to him about this. And uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is something that we are all talking about. And you know, uh, in the journalism space, we'll be racing as well uh, to catch up with AI. Prof, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share with your viewers. Maybe my first question will be, really, what inspired you to write this second book? There's so much talk about artificial intelligence but there's not enough focus on how we from the global south, how we Africans can use artificial intelligence to improve the quality of life of our people. So the motivation was to say, how do we make AI work for ourselves? How do we use AI to improve the quality of life of the people from the global south? That is the motivation fundamentally for the book. Yeah, still on the, the, the topic of the, the, the Global South. Uh, you, you mentioned Global South as the center for your book. And what would you say are the unique opportunities and risks for AI adoption looking at the uh, development regions like uh, Africa and the rest of the Global South? Mm. You see, see, the Global South, by the way, is the global majority. 6.6 .6 billion people out of 8 billion people live in the Global South. And uh, the Global South is not a geographical concept, it's more of an economic concept where we are talking about emerging and uh, least industrialized countries. Now, the issue is if we don't deploy AI to improve the quality of life of our people, the gap between the Global North and the Global South is going to increase. Mm -hmm. The gap between the rich nations and the poor nations is going to increase. The gap within country between the poor and the rich is going to increase. So it's very important that we use AI as the driver, as a tool to drive inclusive development, to drive um, shared prosperity. If we don't do that, there will be a problem. There are dangers, of course. If we don't participate in being creators of AI. The AI might not be very useful to us. There might be biases, there could be discrimination. So in addition to deploying and using AI, we must also become creators of AI systems. We must also become producers of AI systems so that the AI systems are relevant to our situations. We know our problems better than the global north. We know our problems better than Silicon Valley. When I say energy poverty, when I say access to good quality education, when I say healthcare, when I say mining, when I say poverty, poverty, these challenges are very uniquely ours in terms of the global south. We can't wait for Silicon Valley to solve these problems for us. We can't wait for the global north to solve them for us. Why don't we, as citizens of the global south, have agency where... We use AI, we deploy AI to solve our problems. Number two, we build AI systems to address our problems. That's what is the motivation. That is the agenda and mandate of this book. Yeah, you, you talk about AI as the, the, the driver of inclusive development. What does this mean or what does inclusive development mean in the context of you know, AI in Africa, you know, especially where we, we are lacking behind in terms of uh, uh, industrial uh, development and, 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 and many other innovations that, that happen around the globe. When we say inclusive development, we're even challenging the global north. But when you look at America, when you look at France, when you look at you know, Russia, when you look at England, they don't have inclusive development. You know, in Silicon Valley, you know, in America, where the AI is coming from, if you look at the ghettos in America, one third of the young black males are in prison, parole or probation. There are poor people on the streets of New York. So when we say inclusive development, we're actually even challenging the global. And we say, no, 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 no. Don't just use AI to enrich a few people. Don't just use AI for the... Uh, rich companies only. Why don't you use AI to empower the ghettos in America? But we, we, we are constantly on ourselves. So inclusive development means AI must help 
the poor woman, the poor man in the village of Zimbabwe, in the village of Ghana. We must use AI to improve the quality of the majority of our people, the poor. So it's a challenge which actually the global north has not resolved. And we are saying we, given the history of poverty, the history of colonialism, the history of unemployment, the history of our terrible circumstances, let's use this technology as an equalizer to improve healthcare, to improve education, to improve access to energy, to improve our agriculture, to maximize and optimize our mining, in particular driving value addition and beneficiaries in agriculture. So the majority of the people is my concern. How do we improve the quality of life of the majority of our people in Zimbabwe, in Africa, in the global south? So yeah, you mentioned agriculture, you mentioned health, and for me, I'll be saying, you know, this is also an issue of policy. Uh, as the governments of Zimbabwe, the governments of Africa, are they ready to come up with, uh, you know, policies on how AI can be integrated in the, in the broader work that we do? Very important question. We must not assume that Africans are going to benefit from AI. We must not assume that the people of the global south are going to benefit from, from AI or transformative technologies in general. We must prepare for the technologies. In the book, I talk about what needs to be done for Africa to be ready for AI. I talk about what needs to be done for the global south to be ready for air. For example, energy, connectivity, human capital, governance, and there's so many foundational things that have to be in place for us to benefit from the AI revolution. It's not guaranteed that we're going to do this. We need to make sure that we actually make our countries ready. Now, in terms of a general approach, we must have a national AI vision. What we want to achieve in Zimbabwe in terms of AI come with after consultation, after buy-in and ownership by civic society, by industry, by academia, by government, we must craft a national AI vision. After that, we say, okay, what is the game plan? We must come up with a national AI strategy to take us from where we are to our vision. But most importantly, implementation, implementation, implementation. We must come up with an AI implementation matrix. Who is going to do what? When are they doing it? Where is money going to come from? What are the milestones towards success? How do you measure success or lack of it? How do you feedback? That framework, AI vision, AI strategy, AI implementation matrix is important within Zimbabwe, within Malawi, within Bangladesh. But more significantly, we must have the same framework at SADAC. The SADAC AI vision, the SADAC AI strategy, the SADAC AI implementation matrix. Beyond that continent, the continental AI vision, the continental AI strategy, the continental AI implementation matrix. Those three layers, nation, block, and content must be interacting and learning from each other. That's what we need to do if we as Africans are going to benefit from the economics of AI. When I say economics of AI, uh, generative AI alone in the year 2025 is going to contribute $4 trillion to global GDP. $4 trillion from one type of AI. The entire AI ecosystem is going to contribute $10 trillion, 10% of global GDP. If we don't do what I've just described, we as Africans, we as people from the global south are not going to benefit from the economics of AI. Yeah, uh, maybe let me look at the book and say, who is the target audience for this book? Number one, policymakers. As I've just indicated, the national AI vision must be controlled and dri driven by the government, working with the private sector, working with academia, working with civic society. So policymakers, the politician is a target. Number two, the academics are a target. Number three, the business people, the people who, who have got the money. Number four, civic society. So all these constituencies must buy this book, must listen to this book, must talk about the content of this book so that they are able to use AI to drive their economies. So policymakers, academics, 
business people and civic society leaders. They are all uh, part of the target of this work, of this book. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, your, your previous, uh, your, your, your last book on AI was looking at control systems and engineering. And right now you are you're focusing on develop, inclusive development. How does this book build on the, the last one that you published? Yes, so the last one was mainly a teaching book. It was very technical. Control systems is a technical subject in engineering, electrical engineering. So it was more for graduate students, uh, undergrads, part four, part three, and researchers. Um, it introduced AI, but mainly as a tool, as part of engineering. This one now is accessible to everybody. It's a book that's very readable because I'm simply saying, okay, I got a chapter there that goes into detail about AI, but the rest of the chapters are about applications, agriculture, mining, and so on. So the building on the old one is to say, now we're going to say, let's move away from engineering as a sector, as a field of study, and talk about inclusive development, all the sectors of the economy. And more importantly, I have 11 sectors in the book. Telephony, mobile telephony, agriculture, banking, tourism, journalism, I have 11 sectors in the book. But what's even more interesting is that I have got 10 case studies five from Africa and five from outside Africa. In Africa, I have Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Rwanda, and Mauritius. Outside, I have India, China, Singapore, Malaysia, and UAE, 10 countries from the global south. The idea is to make sure that we don't reinvent the wheel. Why don't we learn from Singapore? Why don't we learn from Rwanda? Why don't we learn from Mauritius? And why doesn't Rwanda learn from China? In other words, I'm putting them together as global south so that these countries can learn from each other. Yes, they're different. Yes, there are different levels of development, but by studying them together, we we'll allow the unlocking of lessons from Rwanda to Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe to Ghana, and so on and so forth. That is the motivation behind the structure of the book. Yeah, so how do we ensure that the ethical, ethical AI uh, is actually uh, at the center of it to avoid you know, biases and, and inequalities, especially in countries where there are weak institutions? Very important question, governance and regulations. Uh, we need to make sure that we build up what we call a governance and regulatory framework so that we can handle the issues around bias, discrimination, and so on. So AI will not be very useful without AI governance, without AI regulations. We need to build a regulatory framework in Zimbabwe and build a regulatory framework in SADC and across the continent so that we can mitigate and manage the dangers you've just outlined. So in the book, we talk about uh, governance, we talk about regulations and so on. But let me emphasize that when the chips are down, the AI revolution in the global south will rise or fall on leadership. We need leadership in the public sector. We need leadership in the private sector. We need leadership in the academy. Leadership, leadership, leadership is so foundational so that we can use artificial intelligence as a driver of inclusive development and shared prosperity. The benefits of AI must be shared. The benefits of AI must empower the majority of our people. That is the motivation behind the book. And the Americans have not done that. They've not done, they've, they've done very well by, you know, making money out of AI and so on, but their prosperity is not shared. Their development is not inclusive. So as we do this for ourselves in the global South, we hope to also inspire the global North to produce inclusive development out of transformative technologies, to produce shared, shared prosperity out of transformative technologies. That is our mandate. Yeah, lastly, uh, as someone who has moved between academics, politics, uh, innovation, how do you see your role in shaping Africa's uh, AI future? You know, my exposure to government, my experience in government allows me to understand a bit of public policy, understand how politicians think, uh, understand how the region works, uh, understand how the content works. So that comes in handy. And then my background as a technologist, as an engineer, 
allows me to understand technology well and then think about how we bring the two worlds together, the world of science, the world of technology, and the world of public policy. So I hope to be a bridge between the political leaders and the engineers, the policymakers and the scientists. And since I've been in both worlds, I hope to be a catalyst for the usage of transformative technologies to improve the quality of life of the people of Zimbabwe, of the people of Africa, of people of the global south, by bringing the two worlds together, public policy and science, public policy and engineering. Yes, for those who are just joining us, I'm talking to Professor Arthur Mtambara, and he's talking about his book on AI. He'll be launching the book on the 22nd of uh, May in Bulawayo, uh, 7.30 to about 8 o'clock at the Bulawayo Club. I I'm sure you also have a, a, a launch in Harare. When is the launch in Harare? Hmm. So just a big correction. In Bulawayo, we started at 5.30 in Bulawayo. 5.30 in Bulawayo uh, on the 22nd of May. In Harare, we are on the 20. 1st of May, 6 o'clock at ZIE uh, in Eastleigh, the headquarters of the Zimbabwe Institution of Engineers. So Harare, the 21st of May, Bulawayo, the 22nd of May. So finally, for those who want the book, where can they, is this now available and where they can get it? Yeah, uh, after the launch, the book will be available in most of the bookstores in Zimbabwe, in particular Bulawayo and Harare and Mutari. But during the launch, we also going to have discounted copies being sold. So you can come and pick up your copy during the launch. So the launch copy will be signed. And how much is the book going for? Yeah, that, that makes me <laughs> feel very bad. You know, the problem we have in uh, publication, we don't control the value chain. And so when you do a book with a global publisher, like I'm doing with these guys, they have a very good book, nice pictures, and very well done, but very expensive, unfortunately. So we're trying to find a way that we can produce books ourselves in the global south and make them affordable. This one is not very affordable. Online, it's about 160 US dollars, but we are getting it for 100 dollars uh, for the launches. So I feel guilty about the price, but uh, we'll work on it in the future. So 100 bucks, 100 big bucks, but we will we'll try to make sure in future we control the value chain. We don't right now. So while we are talking about AI, we're also talking about the AI to produce books. And that was uh, uh, Professor Adam Tambara. And with your 100 bucks, you get the book uh, uh, AI, a driver of inclusive development and shared prosperity for the global south. Thank you, Professor, for joining us. And we'll see you at the book launches in Bulawayo. And in OK, yeah. And, and my last parting shot is to say we as Africans, must make technology work for us. No one will make AI work for us except ourselves. Number two, we must also become creators of AI systems, not just consumers, but creators. So let us work together to use AI to improve the quality of life of our people. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share with your viewers. Okay.